This is the Tevin Traveler, Andrew Sheets with you. This blog is about the spiritual life of Jesus Christ in us who believe on him and applying this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. If we believe that Christ died on the cross for our sins, according to the scriptures, he was buried and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. If we believe that, we are saved. We're saved by faith alone, nothing else, not by works. By grace through faith, it's not of anything we can do. It's a gift. Read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Do not let the false teachers and the misguided people who walk into their vain imaginations try to tell you the gospel is complicated and it takes and it's of many aspects of the whole Bible, or it's about feeding the poor, or it's about just believing Jesus, believing Jesus. The, de the demons believe Jesus. Of course he existed. They know that. People, there are, I've never seen in my 12, 15 years of really following closely the rapture and the end times that I've been a student of eschatology, I've never seen such an outpouring of everybody that, can ha that has a laptop computer or, or, or a computer uh, making YouTube videos about dreams they're having about the rapture. Uh, some woman, she's dedicated herself to just do rapture videos. And the, the, the watchman, Lisa Boyd, pours her heart out, watch woman 65. The pleas are out there. They're, they're just out there. Everyone, people, those who are awake know we're in the last moments. Now, this is why I'm doing this video. Normally, I on this subject, I would just blog it and leave it. But the Lord has put it on my heart. To make a plea in this, the God has a sense of humor. All Israeli news network posted this article yesterday, uh, it, it, and, and you can't make this up. They have their Abrahamic peace accords article, and then they also have an article on Antiochus Epiphanes. Now, for those of you who do not know who Antiochus was, the fourth, Antiochus the fourth of Epiphanes, he was the Greek king that slaughtered tens of thousands of Jews in a matter of days. He's the Jew or the Greek that came in and defiled the temple. He came in to he came in and defiled the temple by uh, sacrificing a pig to Zeus, and that was the on the bringing uh, the beginning of the Maccabee revolution. This is where the nine menorah candle came in. The miracle that they, when they were out of oil, the la the middle lamp was still lit, which is really representing Jesus Christ. The Jews will soon see it, but you can't. The, the, I was so shocked by this. Now, for those of you who do not know, Joel Rosenberg is the editor-in-chief of All Israel News. It's a news outlet in Israel. And Joel Rosenberg is a messianic, hardcore, hardline Zionist whose job is to bring the low-informed, feeble-minded Christians, non-Bible-reading Christians, into the fold, the Zionist fold, to get them to totally be blind to what the Abrahamic peace accords is. But those of you who are awake, and those are my listeners and my readers, you're awake. You're not asleep. You're not fall falling into the Zionist trap. You're also on the other side of the coin, you're not falling into this um, replacement theology trap where you think the church has replaced Israel and that Israel is of no existence and Israel is of nothing. The Jews are nothing. They're finished. No, no, no. That's from this, from Satan, from the very pits of hell. God has not forgotten the Jews. 
He still has his remnant, his chosen remnant, and they will come through the fire. The time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, they will come through that. And we're excited about that. They will soon be joining the body of Christ. But they've got to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. They've got to go through the purging process so they'll know who their true Messiah is. But the Ab make no mistake, listener, the Abrahamic peace accords, this is the false peace. This is what Israel's going to take the bait and they'll think that when they say peace and security, sudden destruction comes. Do your homework. Don't just take what I say and buy it. Don't take what these false teachers say out there. Whatever anyone says, take don't take it for granted and take it as the absolute, but take what I say and find it for yourself. Study it for yourself. Take what the false teachers say, study it for yourself, and see which one the Lord puts on your heart as being the truth. Let's begin. Why do I say God's sense of humor? Why would God have a, be, be, have a sense of humor about this or laugh at this? Read Psalms 2. God literally in Psalms chapter 2 looks down on the wicked in their plans and he laughs. Make no mistake that national Israel is not God's chosen people. When I say national, I mean the government and its Zionist full uh, apostate agenda. Israel are you kidding me? People, you think that Israel is God's chosen? They are the, the, the LBGT gay capital of the world. Go look at Tel Aviv. I've spoken to Israelis. Israeli IDF officers retired. I'm retired military. They literally get angry. They'll, they'll say, what? You've got to be kidding. You think that the Six-Day War was God's hand in helping Israel? No, our soldiers fought bravely in that. They are in an apostate state. They are in a the blind state. God has blinded their eyes right now. They can't see. Only a remnant is going to come out of that. Only a third of the remnant is going to come out. Right now, God used the Zionist, the Luciferian elite like the Rothschilds, to bring Israel back together for what? for the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's what we're seeing. And God laughs at their, at their wicked work because he knows that this is all going to play into his hand in the end times. Now, all Israeli news, Joel Rosenberg, I know this wasn't planned. This is why I'm saying God has a sense of humor. This He had no concept that this was put together and the, the connection. And December the 9th, look at this. The, the nine represents, the number nine in biblical numbers represents judgment. So yesterday, I, you, you read the links here. Uh, Joel Rosenberg posts in allisrael.com, new Israeli government expects to sign the peace agreement with the Saudis within a year, the ambassador says. And then right after that, he's got the rare Antiochus fourth coin is discovered. and. The article with the Abrahamic peace accords, which many, including myself, know that this will be the peace agreement the Antichrist will confirm to bring Israel into a false sense of security before he defiles the temple during the middle of the tribulation, spoken of by Daniel in chapter 9, verse 27, and which Christ referred to and made reference to in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. It's also in Luke 21. And in Luke uh, 17, now there, uh, this Antiochus the Fourth of Epiphanes, this Greek Hellenistic king, he had the he had full of evil spirits. He had the most vile, inexplicable hatred for the Jews, and. He was a type of Antichrist, and he defiled the temple. And this is a type and shadow of exactly what's going to happen again, people. He, when he defiled the temple, this is what the real Antichrist will do in the middle of the tribulation. And that's why we're making a plea. If you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, find him now. 
Now, this bust I have here is Antiochus IV Epiphanes, and it just looks kind of amazingly creepy. You can look at this statue, imagine this man being full of demons, right? He captured Jerusalem in 167 BC, and he desecrated the temple in sacrificing a pig on, on the altar to Zeus. This was the abomination of desolation. Now, false teachers will say when they're reading Matthew 24 that that's what Jesus was talking about. No. He's saying when it will happen. So they're th- so people say, no, he was talking about something that's a lie from hell. No, he's talking about when it happens again. Just to give you a picture, a type, the typology and the sh- type and shadow of what's to come to Jerusalem, Look at the description of the rage of Antiochus in Jerusalem. It says like, and this was by the Maccabees, uh, in 2 Maccabees 5, 11 through 14. This is not canonized scripture, but this is for historical purposes. During the Maccabee rebellion, Jerome talks about it. Other historians talk about this, but it says, quote, Raging like a wild animal, he set out from Egypt and took Jerusalem by storm. He ordered his soldiers to cut down without mercy those whom they met to slay those who took refuge in their homes. There was a massacre of young and old, a killing of women and children, a slaughter of virgins and infants. In the space of three days, 80,000 were lost, 40,000 meeting a violent death and the same number being sold into slavery. Shocking. It's shocking. This people is only going to be child's play of what is to come when the Antichrist comes. And I'm talking about in the middle of the book of Revelation, when the Antichrist flips, is no longer the nice guy confirming this Abrahamic peace accord. This is what I'm going to talk in now that Joel Rosenberg is pushing. And guess what? They're thinking, oh, peace and safety, peace, peace. We have peace. Finally, we have security. We have a world leader. We have a stable economy. We have a one world religion. There's no more battles over religion. Islam, <coughs> Islam, Christianity will fold in with the Judaic Abrahamic peace accord. The Noahide laws will come into play this, I'm sure. And the Jews will be thinking that he is like their false Messiah. He is their Messiah promised. While he's going to restore Israel, he's going to give Israel prominence and will have leadership out of Israel. And he'll give the Jews back their temple. They'll be worshiping in here. Everything is fine. And then when, why did Jesus say, hey, let, let's read Matthew. Go with me, listener. Go with me. Go to Matthew chapter 24 with me this happens when i'm doing these videos sometimes i'll be talking and and the lord just presses it on my heart hey read with the listener read read just read and let me just say this i just recently exposed and i rebuked this generation 2434 this uh, tyler guy he's trying to teach people that the the, the kingdom gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he's using mostly Luke here, 17 and 21, is about talking about the rapture. Yes, we see a typology of the rapture, but these, the Olivet Discord is talking about the tribulation and the second coming of Jesus, people. Separate subject, but look at my studies there. So when Jesus is talking in Matthew 24, and the same in Luke 20. In Luke 21, after he's talking about Jerusalem in Matt in Luke 21, 3 through 5, he switches over to talking about future events. <clears throat> I'm now in Matthew 24. This is all talking about the tribulation. At the end of Matthew 24, Jesus writes, When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him 
which is on the housetop, not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return to take his clothes. What Jesus is talking about, when the Antichrist steps into the temple, the same way Antiochus IV Epiphanes came in, the Greek ruler, and defiled the temple, the Antichrist is going to do the same thing in the middle of the tribulation. He is going to make a sacrifice, probably similar to what Antiochus did, the type of Antichrist. He's probably going to slaughter a pig or do something to defile the temple. That's when the Jews realize that they've been totally deceived. They've been taken for spoil. The ones who are awake, who know and study scripture, are going to run. The other ones are going to be just milling around like chickens in a chicken coop, wondering what happened, what happened. They're going to be slaughtered, slaughtered. Only a remnant's going to come through at Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. Read it. Read why Paul wrote in, in Dan, uh, correction in Romans chapter 9, 25 through 27. The Abraham Accords Peace Agreement, End Times. Read my study on that, people. It's in the blog links attached in the description blocks of this video. Joel Rosenberg and his kind are all like these Many of these Messianic Jews, like this Amir Tisfati and them, are like Judas goats waiting for the sheep to follow him to slaughter. These sheep are not the sheep that belong to Jesus Christ. The new religion of Abrahamia, Chrislam, end times. Read and study that link, please. Reader, make no mistake. Listener, watcher of this video, make no mistake. We're watching a major end time prophetic a bill, event build before our very eyes. I repeat, make no mistake, reader. You are so blessed, listener, watcher of this video. You are blessed to be here. The Lord has led you to this site so you can your eyes can be open. You're not going to be caught up in the drama of the evangelical make America great, the, the great Zionist drive, the great we're going to be, we're going to bring back America to God. We're this big kingdom building, this new apostolic reformation, it's all lies, people. No, our redemption draws nigh. We're looking up. We do not concern ourselves or get entangled with the affairs of this world. We're told and warned by Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 through 5. Read it for yourself. If we're to strive lawfully to get our crowns, we don't get caught up in the affairs of this world. We rightly divide the word of God and we don't go running after this teacher and that teacher and this one. Oh, look what this one's saying. Oh, we got to follow this. Oh, oh, my pastor is so awesome. I love him. No, don't follow me. Don't follow him. Follow Jesus Christ. Do you know what Daniel 9, 27 is saying? Read it again. That's what Jesus Christ is talking about. Now, I have a link in here. It says, who is he in Daniel 9, 27? Sadly, there are false teachers, and I had to part ways with a young man. I'm not going to mention his name. He got caught up with, he kept trying to tell his listeners that Daniel 9.27 is talking about Jesus Christ. God forbid, how foolish, how, what a moronic, willfully ignorant thing to say. People, Daniel 9.27, he that is spoken of is the Antichrist. These false teachers want don't want people knowing this is the Antichrist they're talking about. How would they, in fact, I got with full of righteous indignation. I was so upset by that, and I corrected this individual. I corrected him with love, and they refused. They doubled down and came back with more teaching on it, and I told them, bye. But Daniel 9.27 reads, it says, and he, this is the Antichrist, read my link on that. The study is not about that now. I already did a study on why he is the Antichrist. And he shall confirm the covenant. That covenant is, I am convinced, and so are many other scholars and Bible watchers and watchmen, that covenant is the peace agreement in this Abraham Accords peace plan. He will confirm it with many for one week. That is, in, in prophetic weeks of years, that is for seven years. But guess what? 
in the middle of the seven, what's the mid, middle of seven years, 3.5 years, and the three and a half year point, the mid trib, he'll cease, he'll cause the sacrifice. That's the sacrifice that will be given back to the Jews. Their temple will be given back to them. They're thinking, wow, we're back in business again. Listen, people, stop being foolish and sending your money to these Zionists so they can rebuild the temple, unless you want to help them bring in the end times faster. And Jews are like, oh, we want to return back to God. God does not, God has divorced Israel. He wants nothing to do with their sacrifices. He says, get it out of my sight. You don't believe me? Read my links. It's right in there. It, we're told in Micah, in Hosea. The uh, Zechariah goes into that. He, Jeremiah talks about that. God's like, I don't want your sacrifices. You have nothing. But he's not. But see, the replacement theology liars, liars will tell you, oh, church, we're now God's precious one and only. Israel's finished. They're, they're finished. They're, they're thrown to the outside, never to return. No, they're done. No, that's a lie. See, Jesus, he wants his Jewish remnant. He loves God is not going to break his word, his promise with Abraham. The Abrahamic covenant he made with Abraham. God is not a liar. He still has that eternal. But who is Israel? Who is Israel? It's not the Zionist machinery. And these devout Jews know, the real devout Jews know that the Zionists have hijacked Judaism people. Anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. Read my study in the links, people. So anyway... So it says, so cause, uh, 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 so cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Oblation means the holy rites of the temple will all stop. And for the spreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. So that's why, just like Antiochus IV of Epiphanes uh, sacrificed a pig, and he made the priest eat pig, eat the butchered pig. And that the Antichrist will do the same thing. This is going to happen very soon. And even to the con, uh, the consummation and the determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. So we're told in Daniel that this is going to happen again. And this is what this Abraham peace agreement is. It's a false peace, people. And uh, the ongoing Abraham Accords peace plan has words clearly spoken of the end times prophetic warning. Read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 3, about when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them. The language directly taken from the Abraham Accords, peace and stability, and this is where Joel openly, he literally read my links, I'm not making this up. Joel Rosenberg was openly telling stupid Christians to pray for peace and security for Israel. What? And then pray for Jerusalem. Pray for Jerusalem. It's in the Bible. No, David is talking about the Messianic kingdom. People, if you want to pray, pray the way Paul did. Open your Bible with me. Stop right now in this video. If you've never heard this before, open your Bible to Romans chapter 10. Go to Romans 10 with me, people. And go Romans chapter 10 and go to verse 1. This is how we are to pray, people. This is how we are to pray. I'm opening up Romans. Uh, hold on with me. Uh, Romans chapter 10. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. We pray that Israel be saved. Who is Israel? Paul tells us in chapter 9, 25 through 27, referring to Hosea chapter 10, uh, correction, Hosea chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, and Zechariah 10, 9. That's the remnant. You see, peace and the word stability are synonymous, okay? And this is, comes right out of Asalafea. And then note that the word stability, security, the words used in the perverted language Bibles, but the King James Bible clearly writes it out. True Christians realize that the peace agreement is not a good thing. 
not a good end result for Israel. And there will be no permanent true peace in this world, people, for Israel until Jesus Christ comes in the second advent after the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation. And then truly will everlasting peace finally come. And therefore, we can see clearly who Joel Rosenberg truly is, people. He's pumping it like crazy. See my extensive studies on this. I, I'm not picking on Joel Rosenberg. I pray that his eyes be open. He is using the evangelicals as a useful tool, just like Amir Tisfati is. They're using us, people. Don't be used. Don't be a feeble-minded little follower. They say, oh, you got to speak Hebrew to know the Bible. Liars. Dr. John Hinton from Harvard, he and I have spent hours and hours studying on this. The King James Bible is the final authority. Those Greek and Hebrew scholars, the greatest minds known to the world from Cambridge University, Oxford University, and Westminster, all were chosen, handpicked by King James IV, okay, of England, King James I of Scotland. King James is the one that put that together, people. Read it for yourself. English is fine. English, your English is fine. Hebrew is only spoken by a very tiny fraction of the world. Most of the world, they must learn English. Why does Amir Tisfati have to speak English? His English is pretty good. But why does he have to speak English? To communicate with the world? Then why is he telling us that before you can understand the Bible, you have to speak Hebrew? That is a lie from hell. What about the New Testament? I don't think Emeritus Fadi and them speak. I don't think Joel Rosenberg speaks Greek, does he? John Hinton speaks Greek fluently. He is an ancient Greek scholar. He's a Rhodes scholar. He's off the chart. Men's intelligent said that in Greek, the King James translators have the, the most purest, pristine translation you can do. Why, didn't, why did God allow the King James to be printed so it could be spread to the world? Hebrew's not spread to the world. Greek is not spread to the world. And it's interesting that Amir and these false teachers keep saying, oh, Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew. The, the Old New Testament was not written in Hebrew. They want to stay in the Old Testament. The church age is in the New Testament, people. Separate subject. So why is Joel Rosenberg pumping this Abraham peace accord so hard? Read and you'll find out. Why did Ambassador uh, David Friedman, a modern Orthodox Jew, choose the Trinity Broadcasting Network to co-produce a groundbreaking series on the Abraham Accords? Read the false prophets are talking to, the, to Israel the same way they did in Jeremiah's day. Read about the Antichrist, the peace covenant in Daniel 9, 27, the deal of all deals. Read my open letter to Mr. Joel Rosenberg of the Joshua Fund. Read, I ask, another le open letter to Joel Rosenberg, why he's asking us to pay for, pray for peace and safety. Read about pray Israel be saved. Don't pray like the Zionist Dominion evangelical shills like Mike Evans. Now, in the note here, I have additional stuff here on this uh, Antiochus IV. He was known as called himself what God manifest. He's going to be this, the Antichrist is going to be the same thing. He thinks he's God on earth. I won't read all this to you, but read this in here. I'm going to stop it here. People look up. This is exciting news. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that eyes be opened and ears to hear, even so come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.